Hey everybody, welcome to the show. Alex here. Do you want to know what's really going on? Why the flu is being used as an excuse to destroy the world's economies and take away our liberties? All right. Do you want to know why the mainstream media is telling us things are never going back to how they used to be? And that this is the new normal? Why the powers that shouldn't be push so viciously for social distancing? Why is that? They want us all to reduce our circle of friends by 75%. Why would you want to reduce your circle of friends? By three quarters. That's almost all of your friends. Basically, I mean, when you're rounding up money and coins, you know, if you got three-fourths of something, just round it up to one, right? Anything over 0.5. This is 0.75% of all of your circle of friends should be reduced and should be isolated. Why do they want to criminalize gatherings? You know, that passed in a, an executive order years and years ago, and I told people, you know, it's illegal to gather in social... In, uh, gatherings why do they want us to stop using cash we can talk about that if you're a cryptocurrency investor or why you see the uh, the basket of specific deposit right exchanges there were four currencies in the world with the IMF under Janet Yellen with, that were traded and they added the Chinese yuan and she was asked this was like two years ago why did you add the Chinese yuan to the, the basket of currencies that the uh, the Swiss banks hold basically, you know, to monitor the banks. And she said, because of risk of the volatility of the dollar. And now you're seeing through pandemic and uh, disease scare, the possible disappearance. Plus you don't want to transmit disease right by paper using paper money. When we could all go electronic, we could all go into our mobile phones, our locator units, <clears throat> the ones that are giving our location to the people who are trying to track and see if we're social distancing correctly. All right, now here's the big doozy. Why do they want to introduce digital money as a universal and basic, basic income? Have you heard of UBI? Universal Basic Income. That means and now you're drawing on your social security, right? Everyone, yeah, your expenses to live because basically, you're born on this earth, you have expenses, and you have to find out how to live, and figure out a way to live. You don't, without welfare or charity or people to help, you cannot survive on this earth. We're the most advanced technologically and aware species on this uh, plane and we cannot figure out how to make a basic living sustenance limit for people who live on earth without having to worry about whether they have shelter whether they have food whether they're going to live or whether they're going to die within weeks you know and it's all based on this economy now we're living in a period where uh, I found this video saying we're living in a period that we're living in the movie The Twelve Monkeys. Remember that with Brad Pitt? Uh, was it Nicolas Cage? I mean, uh, Bruce Willis. And it's very prophetic. It's a very prophetic movie. But a lot of the movies in Hollywood have to do with uh, how they program you. And they program you with knowing the plans. Of course, they have these plans and they roll out plans that all are a means to an end. The end is complete slavery of all mankind short life cycles, very uninformed, very ignorant, not using their own thoughts and memory, and following completely a totalitarian technocracy of technology hidden, okay? So let's go in and listen to this video for a minute. Now this is a, a couple, I've watched them on YouTube a lot, Aaron and Melissa Dykes. They have a YouTube channel you can look up called Truth Stream Media. I listen to at least one of their videos every week. Uh, they put a lot of time and a lot of editing and a lot of images into their videos and they, they're little projects every time they put one up. They're not like me 
it just hits the record button and here we go sail it out there so watch this let me just show you a little clip What happened to Val Kilmer? Yeah, I was watching that earlier, not responding. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and end this video. <laughs> I'm going to find it for you right now. But uh, go look up True Stream Media. It's a nice channel. They have a lot to talk about. But everything that's going on with this disease around, having to get vaccinated, I've told you before, right? If you get community, most injections especially for flu all of them for any kind of flu shot respiratory syndrome they're not live they're gonna put these uh, inactivated killed people say you can't kill a virus well it's inactivated because it cannot reproduce it can't penetrate your cell membrane and go through the ribosomal uh, RNA process the mRNA and this is the vaccine that Bill Gates is trying to promote. And when he makes that vaccine, it's going to be a killed vaccine. That's what they know them as, inactivated killed. Even though it was messenger RNA code robbed, what they did was they found out a way in the lab to isolate the messenger RNA code and take that out, inactivate it, it cannot penetrate a cell membrane. hope for immunity so when someone tells you they're going to make a new vaccine it's a messenger RNA vaccine and it's coming out and it's going to hit you with it in your arm within a year or less you can't that is not an active replicating live vaccine it's not active immunity it will never penetrate your cell membrane it will never go into the DNA and give you antibodies that you uh, a, a memory and a production code for you to produce antibodies for the rest of your life anytime that disease pathogen arrives in your bloodstream and tries to penetrate a cell you can fight it and you can call it up at any time during your lifetime that is called active immunity okay to against this active cell immunity all right now what they give you on a shot is something that's let's say you took the the mean bug in the in the field and you isolated it then you put it in a suspension but you have to suspend it with an adjuvant which is an irritant that which goes in the tissue so that when you inject that in somebody you get a little bit of a fever and the body goes ah there's a metal liquid derivative being injected into the skin it goes in to try to identify the toxin and it sends the white blood what the white blood cell humoral response of the body which is your blood system response which sends out your T cells and your B cells and then you're going to have a macrophage that gets sent out there to eat the germ okay it can be any kind of germs you know bacteria or viral and it eats it injects the macrophage has nucleic acid it inject that's the inner fluid right it injects its nucleic acid and it dies because there's nothing coming back from this inactivated shot virus that's been killed and inactivated in a lab and stuck in your skin through a metal uh, suspension as an adjuvant intentional irritant to cause the white blood cell system the humoral system which is your blood system to react to that site and send microphages out to eat the germ it's your initial response it's like the front line of defense it's not your it's not your microbiology in the cell with your DNA and your RNA going through the cell and reproducing and spitting out through the cell membrane a new antibody produced by memory and genetic code memorized by the body in the cell able to call up at any time that does not happen when you get a shot that never happens doesn't matter with what vaccine anytime you get a shot 
That virus has been killed, inactivated, suspended in a, metal, in a metallic solution to be stuck in your tissue as an intramuscular IM injection to create a blood slash humoral system response slash white blood cells, lymphocytes, microphage, not micro, macrophage. So once you get that macrophage response, that's what eats up and uses the cell antibodies that you get put in you with the vaccine. Now that has to be specifically matched for what's in the field. If you took an isolate from the field and said, this is what's killing everybody, and you did a real time polymerase chain reaction test on it, and you said, this is the bug that's killing everybody, and we've got the code stretched out before us. Okay copy that and make a test and then everybody that comes in the hospital or the clinic and says i got a cough i had a slight fever for one day it was half a day but i never missed a day of work and it's really really mild you have covid19 and if they do a blood test and they compare that genetic codes stretched out before them if it's not exactly the same which i doubt 99.9 percent it's ever has been then they don't have covid19 even though you it, and even if you think you've isolated it, and that was correct, there's nothing that's 100% correct. The technology is so complex, there is no vaccine that can come out it within a year or less, okay, to vaccinate against a pathogenic bug that is supposedly killed up to 10% for justification of all these measures of people who get the virus when it's actually. 0.1 of 1%, which would be a tenth of 1%. Okay, a percent is a tenth of 100. So it's 100th. One, one out of 100 people that get this flu are claimed right now on stats to die from it. They end up critical enough, they end up a hospital in a hospital and they die. The normal flu, which we can trust the World Health Organization's numbers, they say the normal seasonal flu in any country will wipe out, on average, 4% of the population. Now that's elderly, that's sick people, that's people that are immunocompromised, that's people that got sick, had COPD, maybe they already had asthma, maybe they had another disease, a comorbidity, so they already had cancer and diabetes and uh, uh, liver failure, but you could die of any of those things, and if you tested positive, they say your death causes COVID-19 because the the, insurance systems all got beefed up with this money code to pay I think it's like seven thousand dollars per hospital if they come up with a diagnosis and treat it they get like thirty nine hundred dollars and thirty four hundred US dollars you know so you you want to be find it and diagnose it and then when it's a cause of death and it's any one of your listed comorbidity comorbidities you go ahead and say it's a comorbidity that you want and you're gonna pick COVID-19 because that pays your boss is the most, the owners of the hospital. So thank you for watching. Please hit like, subscribe, and remember, you know, the more we see, I'm so proud because people that are just what I would call normal, uh, non-awake sheep talk about, they're starting to question and they're starting to post things on Facebook like they're awake people and they're researching. I got one friend of mine, He's gone off the deep end. He's, I'm, pr I'm so proud of him. I keep feeding him stuff. We used to hang out a lot eight years ago when I lived in the Dallas area. And uh, he's a really cool dude. He's, a, he's one of those guys that's an athlete his whole life. He's about 15, 18 years younger than me, but he was like on a, a public local league baseball team, you know, always playing ball. He climbs water towers for a living and, and assembly, checks them out, checks water levels, works for a city water. But uh, he has gone into who's organizing this, what the plans are, what are the agendas, and how to understand it. And it's fun to see so many people wake up and finally realize there is a damn group trying to control this whole damn show. And it, it's not a theory, you know. Let's, let's get to the bottom of it. All right. So I'll see y'all later. Have a great day. Hit, please hit like, subscribe, and ring that bell. If you made it all the way to the end, just please hit subscribe. Need subscribers to get up to a number. I need to sell merchandise, please. And that way I can keep doing videos and make a living at it with my other part-time job. Love you. Thank, for, th th thank you so much for your support.
and peace out.